All right, so this will be a view for you. So let me go to the first slide, and then we're ready to get started. Very good size TV, really good size. This would be nice to have a TV like that in home, back in home. Okay, so. Uh, welcome, welcome to a course, course that is entitled Simulation Laboratory Course. And remember when we met in last semester, I made a little bit of marketing work and I said that, you know, this is, you know, clearly the best course organized in this university. Remember I clearly mentioned that if you make a list of good courses in this university, what comes first is uh, simulation laboratory course, then comes nothing, and then slowly other courses like simulation of mechatronic machine. That's where we met when last semester. And uh, now we'll see then. So I promised that this will be a good course, and I wanted to keep this as a, you know, something that uh, we think about matters and subject matters related to simulation, but we're also going to discuss about other topics, something that I feel that it will be beneficial to you. And they even, there will be a one lecture or a short, if not the whole lecture, at least a short talk that is related to carrier console. So I'm planning to explain pretty much all the knowledge that I'm planning to give, all the knowledge that I have for you to make the full benefit for your career. And that's the plan to this course. And, and it's a lot to, to say, and, and we'll see how well we will accomplish this. There are technical matters as well that we will discuss. And this course will get started from those technical matters. So we will get started by looking at how is that we can model space cell bodies and how is that we can describe the kinematics in a three-dimensional case. Then uh, we're also going to discuss about how is that we can describe deformable bodies? This actually, that topic is very broad subject, and it would take a, quite a bit of time to explain all the details related to flexible bodies, but we can just scratch the surface a little bit, and hopefully you will get a you get a good picture what is needed in order to model flexible bodies. Then we're also going to discuss a little bit about the contact modeling, and the really the good. Part of this course is the fact that I'm trying to use a lot of uh, visiting lectures. There will be a first visitor that is coming within a few weeks. He's coming from universe, uh, Delft, Technical, Delft Technical University. How is that? Delft University of Technology. Delft University of Technology, right? The famous one, the, maybe the most well, most known in, in Europe. Well, how that is called? Delft? University of Technology. You, had, you have never heard about it. Anyway, so the first visitor will be coming from that university, and it will be, his lecture will be related to vehicle model. So we're going to look a little bit about how is a different kind of vehicles can be modeled, and then other topics that the visitors will explain to you are biomechanics. We also look a little bit of Product, product lifetime management, which is a business perspective for us, and then uh, what else? Then really the heavy final term of computing, there is another visitor explaining that to you. So at least four visitors, maybe even more than that, so hope you enjoy. Okay, and then really the important thing is that this is not like real lecture in the sense that it was in a previous semester. Remember how it was in the previous semester? It went such that I was explaining and explaining and explaining. You guys were sitting. We can do it that way too, but I'm hoping that you will be active this time and you will challenge me big time. Like really challenging. Okay, what about this? What about that? And what about this? You know, because we can discuss whatever you want. Also related to your career perspectives. So use this opportunity, challenge me, discuss with me, Get, get to know me better, how that sounds. I know that there is a lot to ask because this is not the typical way to go on, but you know, if needed, I can put the recording off every now and then. So if you are afraid to, you know, to ask a question that ends up, end up, ends up to be in the YouTube, 
fine. We can close the recording. We can close the streaming every now and then and then have a good discussion. Okay. And you know how it goes. In YouTube, there's no way, no way to recognize who is asking what. Because, you know, camera is pointing to me. The mic is, you know, close to me. So even if you ask something, you know, online participants are unable to hear you. And that comes to recordings as well. Okay. So. So, again, my name is Raki Mikola. You know me all. So you participated in that class that was, that was entitled as a simulation of a mechatronic machine. Correct. Okay. So anyone that did not participate in that course, you were participating. That's good because, you know, we're kind of building this course top of that uh, simulation of a mechatronic machine. It's possible to participate in this course and it's possible to complete the course without prior knowledge on simulation. But it will be a little bit of rocky road and it needs a little bit of commitment, commitment more than usually, but still is possible to do so. So even if you haven't participated in the previous class, fine. We can make some tailor-made arrangements for you. And with that, it should be possible to pass this course as well. Okay, so I'm your teacher together with Pertu. You know, the Pertu is a guy that you met already last semester. He was the guy that organized all these guided tutorials. And he will be with you in this class too. And based on the feedback, uh, you know, I haven't received the full feedback yet, but, uh, you know, there was this instant feedback option in a model database. And based on that instant feedback, I received, say, uh, a little less than a 10 uh, inputs. And based on those 10 inputs, it seems that you guys like Pertu quite much. So he was a, many mentioned that he's a clear, good teacher. So, so he will be with you again. All right. So if you want to contact me, please send me an email. Or if you wanted to meet me in person, my office is located in the sixth, uh, building number six, seventh floor, and the office number is uh, 6729. Okay. And of course, all this material, like in a previous case, everything will be available in a mobile database. Okay. So, how is this going then? What is an objective of this course? What, why it makes sense to participate in this course? And uh, now these uh, objectives are categorized to three different categories. The first one is clearly related to technical matters. And it says that you will learn to use simulation tools in a product development process. That's what you will learn. And we're going to learn a little bit about the project work as well. So not just, you know, how to accomplish the work, but looking at the big picture too and that's something that uh, we'll get back a little later once all these theoretical aspects are covered but we look a little bit about like i mentioned a little bit about the space cell bodies and that's something that is a good you to know because you know everything is of course space cell. you know there is no such thing like planner case in real life and how to describe everything in a three-dimensional space that's where we will get started even today. And then we're going to look a little bit about the flexible bodies. And then we will really look how is the relation between the simulation models and reality. And then this time, the really the challenge, this course, one of the challenges is to learn the critical thinking against computer simulation. Remember, there is this uh, medical condition called simulation disease severe medical condition, which uh, we have to avoid to get it. But you can easily get that disease because, you know, we are all surrounded by simulation. And what easily happens is that more and more everything will be based on simulation. And less and less everything will be based on common sense. And of course, it should not be like that. Because this, what the simulation is, is offering us ability to learn. So it really needs this common sense. So what I'm emphasizing in this course is the use of common sense and not to try to catch this medical condition called simulation disease. 
you know, then uh, we are so really the big deal in this course is that we are looking at different techniques, not just the multi-body dynamics, how like was the case in the previous semester, but this time we're going to look at the you know different kind of approaches that we're going to look like something called co-simulation which means that we're combining different kind of simulation disciplines to one package and try to solve different kind of disciplines simultaneously. And uh, that's particularly what we're going to do in this course. And an overview about the vehicle modeling, contact modeling, final terminal method, so on and so forth. But really there we are combining things together and we're looking at the big picture rather than the details. Of course, a little bit of details too. How it sounds. Of course, I'm not expecting you to speak to me yet, but clean end of the course, it will be just, you know, very live discussion, group hugs every now and then, then we're gonna sing a song, and then we're gonna again explain something. So it's gonna be more like family get together rather than a lecture. All right? All right, so, so let's, See what else I have. You know, we are doing one simulation work, and the one simulation work is something that Perto will explain to you on next Friday. We'll get back to practical matters in a minute, but there is one simulation work, and this will be a part of, I mean, this will be 50% of your grade. So only one divided by two of your grade will be based on theoretical aspects. Others will be based on what you're actually going to do and how is that you're going to wire and report. And we're hoping you to learn a little bit about the skills that are related, how is that you can express yourself in a scientific manner. Okay, so we will, or we are not going to get in back to this, but Bertu will get back to this on next Friday. These are the topic that I'm planning to teach to you this semester, and like you see, we getting get we get started in a hard way. So again, three dimensional multi body dynamics, and then flexible bodies, model reduction techniques, and that's about it. Those are the main subject matters that I'm hoping to cover prior to first midterm exam. Uh, then. Guess that this is what you. Or this is what they, what will have follow in the second semester. These are related to tutorials. We are not going to cover that, but we will get back to that next week. How is what are the requirements to pass the course? Well, you have to do the simulation work independently. You have to do it in an acceptable way, and that will be half of the grade. Second half will be related to written exam. Written exam is very different than it was in the previous course. Because in the previous course, it was about online exam. This time is a conventional exam. In a way that you have to enroll the exam. You need to go there in person and you need to do that by using pen and paper. Good news related to exam is that I will let you know all the possible questions well before the exam. Actually, how it goes, it goes such the way that now today when we are when we are moving to three-dimensional kinematics, I will let you know the questions. I mean, word by word questions that I might ask in written exam. There are not that many questions. There are, let me think, a total of is it 40 questions, and then I will select six out of 40 that will appear in written exam. And then because this is, you know, friends get together, you also have the power to select something. So you have an opportunity to select one question, and then you have an opportunity to take one question off from the list. This has to be based on your voting. So it's not the individual case, but just when we're entering the midterm exam, we will have a discussion. And in this discussion, you can vote one question that will, for 100% certainty, will be in exam. Another that you will take off from the list. So if there is something that you felt that is very, very difficult, and you have absolutely no idea, you can take that off from the list. 
Okay, how it sounds. And then this is a promise to you. So if it, if I say word to word, I'm not gonna change. I'm not saying like, okay, there are questions related to three-dimensional kinematics. No, nothing like that. But it's like word to word what I will ask. So if there's like, okay, so what is the difference between Euler angles and Euler parameters? Word to word question like that will or might appear in rhythm exam. So I'm not gonna twist in the rules, or I'm not gonna try to modify the question, but they will be as they are explained over in today. Okay. All right, so then, so then how it goes. So here is a formula for you that tells you how is a final grade. Let me see if I have a drawing here. Okay. All right, so here's a formula for us. I forget, by the way, I forget my pen back home, so that's why I'm using my, you know, a little bit old-fashioned way to, to do a writing. So simulation work, that will be one part of the equation, then that will be combined with the written exam, and then we will take an average out of that. And again, we will round that up. So, let's say, hypothetically, you will get... Uh, three from simulation work, and you will get four from written exam, your final grade will be four. It's going to be three and four, so it will be rounded up, so it's going to be four. So then there is an opportunity to upgrade your grade, and uh, that will be based on in-class quizzes. So if you do all the in-class quizzes in an acceptable way, I will explain the details again after a few slides then it's possible that you can upgrade that by 0 0.5 points. Somebody's trying to call me. I, hopefully this is not related to streaming quality. Anyone have a computer or something that can check how is the streaming today? Because sometimes what happens is that the students are calling me or texting me. Voice quality is no good. You are not explaining things in a proper way, so I'm not understanding you. Okay, but, but hopefully it will be fine. It looked to me that it's fine. I'm gonna just check my, uh, this one, it seems that it's all right. Seems that no problem. But if somebody can check that out, that would be really, really great. Okay, so the lectures, those lectures, I mean the live lectures will be on Mondays. This week was a special week. I guess this is because of um, New Year's, uh, holidays so this from this on the lectures will be on Mondays and they will be in this place which is inconvenient place you know look at the place you know I don't know how many hundred people can squeeze in but too many for us because the latest what I checked it was that there was a 42 students enrolled to this class we don't need this big place but it is what it is but if we can make it this way, that you guys are sitting close to me, that would be very nice. Okay. Then tutorials will be on Fridays at 10. And this is the room. And they are not getting started this week, but next week. There will be a, some kind of announcement that we will email to you or send it to you via mode a little later. But not this Friday, but the next Friday is the first tutorial. And no mandatory participation. So if you are busy, fine. Don't let me know that you're not coming to lecture. Don't let Bertutu to know that you're not able to participate in tutorials. That's your freedom to do whatever you want. So you can do whatever you want, except we're hoping you to, to do things in a timely manner. Now, when saying timely manner, you know, what, what we learned from the previous semester was that sometimes there are problems. Sometimes, you know, life is hard and so on and so forth, and you're unable to meet the deadlines. And this can happen. But if you can let us know prior to deadline that I'm facing difficulties, I'm unable to do it within this timeline, can I have an extension? We can provide you an extension. That will be fine. But 
remember it has to be prior to deadline. If you're approaching us after deadline and saying, you know, my life is like hell, I kind of do this and that, and that's, you know, why I'm late, then it's just late. We cannot help you if you're approaching us after deadline. Okay. Okay, so in class quizzes, so this is a business as usual, you know how it goes. So we have a total of 25 points. And, you know, if you're able to score 14 out of the 25, I'm going to give you that extra 0 0.5 points, which automatically upgrades your final grade by one number. Again, you know, again, how it goes, keep in mind that, of course, theoretically, it's possible to get six out of five on this course, because you get here simulation work that is a five, you get read an exam that is five, that will be, average will be five, and then in class quizzes 0 0.5, that will be theoretically six out of five. That's not gonna happen. So it's gonna be five out of five, that is a maximum. How is my streaming, by the way? Was it all right? Good, good, thank you. All right, so then, uh, okay, then the mid report. So the mid reports, uh, we will get back to that next week. But we are forcing you to start working with the simulation assignment already when the tutorials get started next week. And this is for your sake, because if not forcing you, then what will happen is that you will take really relaxed way until the deadline will approach. Once the deadline hits to you, then your life will be miserable. Well, your life might be miserable anyways, but still what we're hoping you to do is that you will learn the technique that you get started already when the assignment is available. So slowly you do something and you do something and you kind of demonstrate in your progress. And we are setting some uh, kind of like mid-report mid deadlines and those will be available in the Moodle database and then you have to send us a report and explaining some of the details related to your simulation work and then this will be report that will serve as a final report as well so we are not expecting you to do multiple times the sim or the one task but just keep on working with this assignment starting from the very beginning okay so again the details will be available next week and all, everything becomes clear to you when Bertha will explain you the simulation assignment. Okay? Clear. So these are the deadlines. What week is today? Is it like week two or week two? Okay, so within, uh, so uh, it's just that we would like you to see your commitment in the very beginning. You know, look at that. So the first uh, tutorial will be available next week, which is a week three. And then the midterm re report is due week after that. But we just wanted to you to, to do something, to get started. And again, if you want able to do this, let us know so we can be flexible. Again, we can be flexible prior to deadline. After deadline, it becomes difficult. Okay. All right, but again, details a bit later. And then, uh, what is the material? Same deal than previously. Even when you know all the questions. To answer the questions in a, in a satisfying way, the material that you need is the material that is available in the Moodle database. They are mentioned that there is a book, you know, Ahmed Jabana's book, that is a part of the, the story, but we are not expecting you to read it. If you wanted to get more deep understanding, Go ahead and borrow that from the library and study by yourself. But we are not expecting you to do so. Everything will be available in the Moodle database. Okay, then let's look a little bit about the introduction. By the way, is, is pretty much everything clear? So do you know what I'm expecting you to do? Summary is this. So I'm expecting you to do the simulation work, okay? I'm expecting you to do the written exam. How is it that you can do the simulation work? Well, you can do it in such a way that you will submit the mid reports, timely manner. There were a total of three mid reports and then the final report. 
and we are targeting this task such the way that well before the, uh, you know, this uh, uh, Labor Day uh, party that is uh, 1st of May, everything is already covered. Because, you know, here the Labor Day party start already, what it is, like two weeks prior to actual day. So then you have enough time to do drinking and parties. No worries about this assignment. And then other tasks as well. All right. So simulation of work and then read an exam. You can do it again by using two midterm exams. They will be conventional midterm exams such that you need to make an involvement. You need to go there in person. You need to, you need to write it using pen and paper. Last year, some of the students, I think they were exchange students, they had a little bit of hard time to participate the midterm exams. So even we organized a special midterm exams such that it was a, not exactly the time that the conventional exam was organized, but another time. So even that is possible. So we try to be as flexible as possible. So those are the two requirements, written exam and simulation work. And then if you want to upgrade your final grade, the best way to do that is that you can simply <clears throat> do the in-class quizzes. This is obviously the best way. Every now and then what happens is that, you know, a student approaches me and is saying that uh, I'm not happy about my grade because I was scoring four out of five and I want to upgrade that to be five out of five. Can you give me an extra assignment? And sometimes we do that, but sometimes we give an assignment that makes no sense to do. I mean, the, you know, if you look at the, how much agency is needed to do the assignment, it's absolutely nonsense. But we wanted the people to, and the student to understand that, you know, the best way to score high, best way to do things is during the course. Later, it will be a very, very rocky road. Another thing that is good to you to know, if you score four out of five, that is considered as very good, isn't it? So it's like very good. So how it goes? One is like, I don't know what is a written statement for one. Is it like... Acceptable or fair, fair, fast, satisfactory. Two out of five, what is that? Like fair, three out of five is good already, isn't it? Three out of five is good. Four out of five is very good. And then the five out of five is excellent. Four out of five, very good. You know, think about it. very good is already very good. And no one really cares that much about your grades. But we get back to that in a, when I'm explaining the you know this matters of um, career counseling to you. All right, so introduction. So really, what we're doing is that we here in this course we're combining things together. So we're combining matters like, uh, of course, you know, three-dimensional drawings that are you know GAT drawings, finite element modeling, uh, control algorithms, uh, hydraulics multi-body dynamics, and so on and so forth, the one package. So we really would like you to take a look at something that is very much in fashion, and what is very much in fashion is a co-simulation. Co-simulation means that we have special tailor-made softwares for one particular discipline, and these softwares can be combined together. And that's what we're doing here as well. And that's, uh, there are many different ways to carry out this co-simulation, we're going to look at the, a little bit about these different ways. But really, the, if you think about the, the picture that was in the very first slide, that's what we always following. This one here, mechanisms, actuators, control scheme, so on and so forth. Now we will do this, but using different softwares. And combining these softwares together, that's exactly what we are aiming in this class. Okay. All right, so then uh, here, and then we're going to look a little bit about the details there. And I'm explaining, trying to really to tell you how is my perspective regarding the, how is the future of the simulation. And I, I, this is already the picture that I showed to you in uh, last semester, but we're going to look at the, you know, what is available, what are the tools that are available in the near future? And uh, what is that you can describe something very challenging using the computer simulation? And this is where I'm using my knowledge that I have learned from the 
scientific meetings and try to explain my views to you. So try to take the full advantage of that too. And then we're going to look at a little bit about how is that we can, you know, cross the lines and we can, how is that we can help people from welding technology to use the simulation. Because in welding technology, one of the major problems are associated to fatigue, and we can help people to make up fatigue predictions. How that will be carried out, that I will explain you a little later in this course. But, you know, we are not looking at one narrow field, but we really wanted to give you as broad perspective as possible. Okay, then what else? Then we are looking a little bit about the contact modeling, like, let me see if I'm able to, animations are not able to, to go. So here is a like, few cases, like simple cases, the bearing modeling, how is that you can model the bearings. And then there is a lot of examples, like really fascinating examples, how is that one can uh, analyze the systems that consist of one very big vehicle of the military vehicle that is then running with the very small particles. I will show you some animations right after the break. Okay, so this person is trying to call me already third time. Hopefully, I don't know what it is. But you said that my streaming is all right, so it's not related to that. So I'm going to call that person back right after. What right once we have a break? Okay, so that's a short introduction. Do you know what I'm expecting you to do? Do you know a little bit about what is this course about? Would you like to discuss with me? Not today. Later, of course. Later. But later. Not today, but later. All good? You happy? You have a can-do attitude? Definitely. Okay, so let's go then. So let's look at the really the technical matters and no. I need to apologize that I said that this is a lot of fun and this is we're discussing things that are related to you know big picture and everything. Yes, we do. But we also need to discuss about the details. And today we will get started from the details. And we look at the how is a three dimensional multi-body dynamics. We're looking at the spatial kinematics. And then when we're looking at the flexible bodies, it's not going to be that details anymore. But we're going to look like what are the what are the big picture that is needed in order to model the flexible bodies? Okay, but let's get started from the three-dimensional kinematics. These are the questions that are related to this subject matter. Now, if you look at the questions, there are, you know, number two is coupled simulation. We haven't really thought that yet, but we will a bit later. Then, uh, what kind of system can be analyzed using multi-body system dynamics? We... We'll, we'll not discuss, discuss about that today, but uh, we can slowly get started. And this is how it goes. Every time we're moving on the new subject matter, I'm first explaining the questions you might, might see in a written exam. And again, how it goes. From this list, I'm going to use a lottery of some kind to select a few of them to be in a written exam. And then you will select one out of the full list, and you will eliminate the one from the full list. Clear. Okay, good. So, but like, uh, you know, why would things are more difficult in space than plan A case? That's something you can learn today. And uh, then the second one, how the angular velocity vector can be computed in space and multi-body dynamics. You're not going to learn it today, but a little later. Explain the concept of Euler angles. You can learn it today. Then uh, explain the gimbal locking. You can learn today too. Then uh, concept of vertical equation that you can learn today. And then uh, concept of Euler parameters. Maybe if we have a time, you can learn that too. But that's about it. Okay. And again, no need to write this down, no need to take a picture out of this, because, of course, this will be available in a Moodle database right after our lecture. Okay, so... Uh, you know this already. This is what we discussed, and we spent, what was it, three months to discuss about multi-body system dynamics. So, business as usual. So, you're very much familiar with this. 
uh, you know, the multi-body system dynamics is a, a multi-body system. So we're getting this way is a mechanical setup or dynamic system that consists of multiple bodies and the bodies are connected together via joints. You know, the joints are really, really playing inherent role in multi-body dynamics because everything will be built around the joints. How to describe these systems or these components that are eliminating the most possibilities between neighboring bodies. That's what the multi-body system dynamics is about. And now, there are many different ways how we could, dis we could describe, describe the equation of motion. You already know the method based on Lacan's multipliers. You already know the method based on coordinate partitioning. But in addition to these two approaches, there are many others. We are not going to touch them. We're going to simply look how is that this, this description of equation of motion we already know, which is based on Lacan's multipliers, what is needed in order to extend that to space objects. And we only look at the highlights not really that deep details. All right, so uh, like, you know, these two as well, you know, in a multi-body dynamics, we don't make any assumption regarding the magnitude of rotation. This is very important to understand because in multi-body dynamics, the bodies can have large rotations. And if you have a large rotations, then that automatically leads to trigonometric functions or the usage of the trigonometric functions, cosine and sine. And if you have cosine and sine in your equation, then you will have nonlinear equation of motion. So it's not about the linear dynamics we're dealing with, but nonlinear dynamics. And if you have a nonlinear equation of motion, generally case or gen generally speaking, there is no analytical equations available. So we have to solve the response by solving the equation in forward of time. So that's what we're doing in the multi-body dynamics. And of course, this is a little bit a matter of an opinion. It says here that the multi-body dynamics is a straightforward approach. I don't know how you feel about that. Is it straightforward or not? Well, of course it is if you're using, you know, just the computers you are not using, not looking at the theory. Of course, the theory can be a little bit rocky, but, well, generally speaking, it's quite straightforward. And it can be applied to a wide variety of applications. Okay, now what we can do then is that we're going to refresh your mind about the Euler angles, and then we're going to move on to something else. And what we're going to move on is will be the method where the rotations will be described by using four parameters. Four parameters, correct. And what are these four parameters? Well, there are many different ways to describe them. So it really depends on the method we're going to select. You will learn to use two methods. The first one is going to be called Rotiquist equation, which is like the mother of all these methods based on four parameters. And then it's variation, which is called Euler parameters. Title, Euler parameter is very close to Euler angles, but these two things has not much to do with each other. So they are completely different approaches. Again, keep in mind that what is the number of parameters I'm describing. And I will get started with the three parameters, which is very straightforward as, you know, the body can rotate in three different ways. Makes sense. Then I'm going to add one more parameter because there is a clear benefits to add one more parameter. And then we're going to deal with the something completely different. Again, keep in mind that I'm not going to claim that the body can rotate in a four different ways. So it's going to be three different ways. But mathematically, describing the body rotation in three different three parameters is difficult. So that's why I'm adding one more parameter. And that's what you are about to learn. Okay, so now... Three-dimensional body is what we're going to get started. And you know how in a three-dimensional body, you know, <clears throat> the description, or maybe we go here, the description in a, what we really wanted to do here is that we wanted to describe a particle with respect to global coordinate system. 
And in space cell case, the constant is exactly the same how it is in two-dimensional case. So we will use this body reference coordinate system. And with help of body reference coordinate system, we will use a vector U bar to scan all the particles within the boundaries of the body. So that's how it goes. Now, no difference in 3D comparing to 2D, only, you know, Clear difference is, of course, the fact that now we have more dimensions, one more adding, one additional dimension, nothing else. Now, what that will lead when we are using the one additional uh, dimension? Well, it means that now, in a, let me try to write this in a clear way. Uh, uh, oh, no. You know what that is? Omega. So that's, uh, in planar case, the angle of velocity is a scalar value because the angle of velocity can take a place around one axis only. And that's the axis that is coming off from the plate. That's where the angle of velocity can take a place. And now, in planar case, angle of velocity is equal than time derivative of generalized coordinate. Well, this is really, really unclear, but you know that we have, in planar case, we have, for one body, we have three generalized coordinates. And those generalized coordinates are R1, R2, and theta. And now if I differentiate the theta with respect to time, I will get theta dot. And that's exactly the same than angle of velocity. Three-dimensional space is more complicated than that. And that's where the big difference comes from. Because in three-dimensional space, angular velocity is a vector. Vector that consists of three components. These three components can be described with respect to body reference coordinate system or global coordinate system. But the big difference is this. There is no way to describe the angular velocity by differentiating the Angular, uh, angular coordinates of generalized, generalized coordinates. So this, that's not equal. Those two things can be related, but they can be related a little bit of complicated ways. And this is a big difference. Here comes the good news, because I'm sure you hear me like this. Angular velocity, generalized, like no one understands, like what the heck? Come on, fine, because I will explain this in details to you a bit later. But shortly speaking, the big difference in a special case is related to angular velocities and how they are related to generalized coordinates. That relation is complicated in three-dimensional space. Surprisingly enough, this is still a matter of research. You know, if you look at the, like, you know, the papers that are in the field of spatial kinematics, people still looking at the ways how the kinematics in spatial case can be described. So it's still an active research field, even though that is clear, you know, body can rotate in three different ways, mathematically you can describe in this and that way, but people are looking at the more efficient way to describe the body orientation. It's quite surprising. But anyways, no, it's a bit more than a 45 minutes. So uh, can we do such that we will have a short break how much you need? Five minutes. Is five enough? Okay, then five minutes, and then we will come back. And once you come back, then uh, we close the discussion for today. And then, oh, by the way, another thing that is needed is there will be in class quiz a bit later today. So you can already log into Socrative. You can see already the question. Don't answer yet, because you might not know what is the correct answer, but uh, we will get back to that a bit later. So five minutes. Five minutes. So let me close this.